So we will continue discussion of uh, differential amplifiers. And this is the second uh, lecture on differential amplifier. In the last lecture, we saw that uh, what are the advantages of differential amplifier over a single ended amplifier. So those three advantages, key advantages were that uh, it will be able to reject the common signal present at the input and both at the output also. And uh, you will be able to apply larger input before the distortion starts. And third is uh, with the uh, tail current bias configuration. Third advantage is that uh, the uh, DC at the output is uh, going to be immune to fluctuation in the DC at the uh, gate of the MOS. That will uh, result in less distortion. That means it will maintain the constant voltage headroom for the signal to group. <clears throat> in this class, uh, we will derive the voltage gain uh, to see if we have any advantage there also with respect to single ended or not. So we are going to make this uh, scenario a little bit more general in a sense that uh, these registers RD1 and RD2, although they are required to be exactly same in theory, but during the fabrication, there could be slight mismatch. Similarly, uh, these two MOS, M1 and M2, they are also required to be identical, but we can take a uh, slight uh, difference between these two. So, and this is VO plus, this is VO minus. So, voltage gain, and uh, we will take the simplest scenario. That means uh, we will take lambda is equal to zero, and uh, we will define voltage gain as the output voltage, which is VO plus minus VO minus, divided by input, total input, which is uh, VI1 minus VI2. So this is going to be the definition of voltage gain for this case. There are uh, three ways in which uh, one can find the voltage gain for uh, this circuit. And today we will see all of uh, them. So first uh, is going to be the usual technique. That means we will call the first principle. That means substitute the MOS by small signal model and then solve for the desired quantity. Second technique is going to be uh, superposition principle. And third is a technique which actually will be applicable only when the uh, MOS is symmetrical. That means M1 and M2, RD1 and RD2, they are identical. So that technique is called half circuit.
method. So we will use all of these three. So first, uh, let us try to use the uh, first technique that is a half circuit method. Sorry, uh, the first principle which we have been using. So we are going to uh, substitute MOS M1 and M2 by small signal model without channel length modulation, no channel length modulation. And uh, we will take RD1 and RD2 distinct. So we have to uh, find out the small signal model and uh, there are two voltage sources, VDD and uh, minus VSS. So these two will be grounded or uh, removed. And uh, we have a DC current source, IESS. So this also has to be removed from the AC model. And uh, removing current source is open circuiting. So at the source, at the common source of both M1 and M2, there will be open circuits towards minus VSS in the small signal model. So now let us uh, draw the small signal model. So we have here first MOS. And this is drain one from where we take output. And then we have RD1. Similarly, we have here second MOS. Both the MOS, they are connected at their common source. And then we have drain two from where we take the output. And this is RD2. This is GM1, VGS1, and this is GM2, VGS2. So here, this is uh, gate one, that means uh, VI1 is here. And uh, here we have VI2, which is gate 2. So this is the small signal equivalent model of the circuit which we want to solve. We can label this as VO plus and this as VO minus. So our goal is to find out a ratio of uh, VU plus minus VU minus divided by VI1 minus VI2. So we will have to set a few equations. So first equation that we will set up is at uh, ACL. ACL at drain one. So here we have a current coming from RD1, which is minus VO plus divided by RD1. And this will be equal to GM1 VGS1. Where GM1 and then uh, this VGS1 can be written as VI1 minus VS. So this is uh, for the drain one. Similarly, at uh, drain two also, we can write the uh, equation. And in this case, this current is going to be equal to GM2 VGS2. So at drain two minus VO minus divided by RD two is equal to GM two V I two minus VS. 
So our objective is to find out uh, VO plus minus VO minus. So for that, uh, we can multiply 1 and 2 by RD1, RD2, and then do the subtraction. So when we carry out RD1 into 1 minus RD2 into equation 2, this implies minus VO plus minus VO minus is equal to RD1 GM1 VI1 minus VS minus RD2 GM2 VI2 minus VS. So here we have a known VS appearing in this equation. So we can separate out uh, Vs part. So that will give rise to minus Vo plus minus Vo minus equal to Rd1 Gm1 <coughs> Vi1 minus Rd2 Gm2 Vi2 and then now uh, terms related with Vs. So we need to find out this Vs. So for that, uh, we set up PCL at source here. So we have two currents, Gm1, Vgs1, uh, coming from M1 and M2, merging at source. So sum of these two currents should be equal to zero. So third equation is KCL at source, which is GM1 VGS1 plus GM2 VGS2 is equal to zero. So this can be expanded GM1 VI1 minus VS plus GM2 VI2 minus Vs is equal to 0. So from here, uh, one can solve for Vs and this will turn out to be GM1 VI1 plus GM2 VI2 divided by GM1 plus GM2. So this can be substituted into equation three. So we can substitute Vs here and then we will have to carry out a, a series of manipulations. And then carrying out the manipulation, one can uh, find out VO plus minus VO minus this thing will turn out to be GM1, GM2. into RD1 plus RD2 VI1 minus VI2 whole by GM1 plus GM2. So, so fortunately we are able to get uh, VI1 minus VI2 term on the right side even for this uh, sufficiently general case. So the voltage gain EV is going to be VO plus minus VO minus divided by VI1 minus VI2 and this will be equal to minus GM1, GM2, RD1 plus RD2 is equal to 
gm1 plus gm2 so this is the generalized voltage gain now we can uh, take the special case of this differential amplifier and uh, try to compare the gain for this case with the gain of a single ended common source amplifier and try to see that whether there is an advantage or not so for symmetrical case that is rd1 is equal to rd2 and gm1 is equal to gm2 so here you can see that av will turn out to be gm rd so actually in terms of uh, voltage gain offered by differential amplifier we see that there is no advantage with respect to that of the single ended uh, case so this is uh, one conclusion for the symmetrical case second uh, important conclusion is uh, going to be related with uh, vs the source voltage that we derived here right so here you can see that when gm1 gm2 they become identical in that case so the voltage turns out to be vs will turn out to be vi1 plus vi2 divided by 2 right and because the inputs are differential For differential input, VI2 is going to be uh, magnitude wise same as VI1, but only the sign difference will be there. So both will be identical, but of opposite uh, sign. So this implies that VS is going to be zero. That means AC grounded. So it will have certain DC voltage, but uh, the AC voltage at the source, common source is going to be zero. So this observation is very useful. This will be uh, used in the third technique that is a uh, half circuit uh, technique for finding out the voltage gain. So now we are going to uh, apply the second technique that is the superposition principle to find out the voltage gain of this circuit. So what the superposition principle says is that uh, since we have two independent sources, so we can find the effect of each of the sources separately and uh, then add their effect to find out the common effect. So here we have VI1, one source, we have VI2, another source, both are independent, although they are related, that is not an issue. And then uh, we can find out their effect at VO plus and at uh, VO minus to finally find out the net effect. So what superposition principle says that we split the effect of uh, inputs to the output. So we know this total output is VO plus minus VO minus. This is what we have to find out. 
of course in terms of the inputs so superposition principle says that this vo can be represented as sum of vo i1 plus vo i2 so this is uh, output only due to vi1 that is for uh, vi2 is equal to 0 similarly uh, this is only due to vi2 that means uh, for vi1 is equal to 0. So superposition principle says that you have to solve uh, this circuit twice. One, when only vi1 is present and uh, vi2 is 0. And then you find out what is the output. So here, what we have written uh, vo i1 is actually vo i1 positive minus vo i1 negative. That means when only VI1 is present in the circuit, that time you find out these two outputs, individual outputs. In that case, VI2 is going to be 0. And perform the same exercise uh, for the other input. So now we are going to uh, find out this thing, this one. Right, so this says that uh, circuit is now going to be this one. So here, this VI2 is going to be zero, but VI1 will be present in the circuit. And this time we will call this as VOI1 plus and this output as VOI1 minus. So this is the first circuit that we will have to solve using the superposition principle. So here also you can see that <clears throat> So to find out uh, uh, this output, you will have to first find out this one and then the second uh, output. So one can of course uh, solve this circuit using a small signal model and in one go, one can uh, try to find out what is uh, VI1. But here we are going to take a slightly different route. We are not going to use the small signal model we will uh, try to find out each of these uh, two individual outputs one by one. So first we will find out uh, VOI1. This is what we are trying to find. So when we try to find out this output VOI1 plus, then you uh, see that what situation we have here is that uh, both the outputs and inputs, they are connected to single MOS, M1, right? So there is only one input, VI1. There are two outputs, but at this moment we are focusing on the first output. So now uh, this scenario is equivalent to a single stage amplifier. In fact, this amplifier is single stage CS amplifier, common source amplifier, because you can see that 
input is at the gate and output is at the drain. So the circuit has finally uh, been simplified to a single common source amplifier. Right. But now what we will have to do is uh, we have to uh, find out what is the equivalent of this much portion of the circuit. Right. Because uh, here, here we already see that we have common source configuration, this much portion. But then rest other part uh, has to be simplified so that we can uh, convert it into a well-known common source configuration and that directly use the gain formula for that uh, case. So what we are now going to do is uh, find out what will be the equivalent for this one. So what is the equivalent of this? So equivalent of this here, you can see that there are two nodes. One is here at VDT. So this is going to be ground. And there's another node here of this portion, which is connected to the source of the M1. So we have to basically find out uh, what is the Thevenin equivalent equivalent of uh, this uh, M2 and uh, other portion and then substitute that Thevenin equivalent here at the source of M1. So we have to now find out the Thevenin equivalent of uh, this portion so we can separate out that circuit. So it is this circuit whose Thevenin equivalent we are trying to find out. So we have to first find out what is RTH and then what is uh, VTH. These two things we have to find out. So Thevenin equivalent means finding out VTH. Now here you can see that uh, in this circuit, there is a, in this portion of the circuit, there is a no AC source present. There is no external AC source present here. Uh, there could be dependent AC source through M2, but uh, there is no independent AC source. So directly you can say that the Thevenin uh, voltage of this circuit is going to be zero. So this is the shortcut. Otherwise, if you want to know the Thevenin voltage, then between uh, this node this source and the ground, you find out the AC voltage. Keep in mind that all these uh, equivalent, Thevenin equivalent, they are being found out for AC quantities, not for the DC. Because we are carrying out the analysis, uh, gain analysis for AC voltages. So here, uh, Thevenin voltage is going to be zero. So this Thevenin voltage is not going to be there. Only uh, some resistance is going to be present there. Now you see that uh, what we have here is uh, looking at source towards the circuit. We have two paths. One in this direction, another in this direction. So if you connect external source, they are the two paths that the current will try to take. Out of this, uh, here you can see that uh, R2 is going to be infinite because this is looking into a DC current source. But this R1 uh, will have certain value. So for R1, what we have is this scenario. So this is R1. And keep in mind, we are doing this for lambda is equal to zero. 
so we already know that uh, looking into source of a MOS for lambda is equal to zero, the impedance that you see is equal to one by gm. So R1 is going to be one by gm2 and R2 is going to be infinite. So this is uh, that uh, RTH, which is parallel of R1 and R2, is actually equal to simply 1 by GM2 with no voltage source. So this entire circuit at this point can be substituted by uh, RTH only. So the this whole circuit will get reduced to this version. This is GM2 and this is equivalent to RS, degenerated source. So we see that for uh, superposition principle when applied for the first case and that too when we are trying to find out the first output uh, due to the first input, in that case the circuit has become uh, degenerated. CS amplifier with lambda is equal to zero, right? So we already have uh, studied this circuit. We know the formula for the voltage gain of this circuit. So here voltage gain uh, AV CS for degenerated phase, we know that is given by minus Rd divided by Rs plus 1 by Gm. This is the standard formula. Now we can adopt it for our case. So it will become minus Rd1 divided by Rs. Rs is 1 by Gm2 and uh, Gm is basically 1 by Gm1. Ev Cs. So this is for this input and this output, so this is basically the ratio of VOI1 plus divided by VI1. So from here, we know VOI1 is equal to minus RD1 divided by 1 by GM2 plus 1 by GM1 into VI1. So one quantity is now known, this plus one. So this is still the first part of the uh, first circuit for the superposition uh, principle. We still now have to find out this quantity. Right? Uh, the second output this one so now what we are going to do we are going to overlook the first output though it is present in the circuit but we are not uh, interested in finding out we have in fact already found out so now we are going to focus only on this part so now when you see this part So for this part, situation is uh, something like this, that now input is to one MOS and the output is to the second MOS. So actually the situation is now a two stage amplifier. 
but uh, we will not uh, exploit that idea to find out the this desired voltage what we will do is uh, we are going to substitute this much portion by its thevenin equivalent so that now you can see that uh, at this end at the source of the second mos uh, there will be so we are going to find out thevenin model looking from the source of m2 towards this big circuit so there will possibly be a voltage source and there will be a series register so that if we are able to find out will reduce this whole circuit to that of common gate case because you can see that output is being taken from the drain and there will be some source and with some register at the source of the uh, m2 and the gate is grounded gate is not being used so this will reduce to common gate configuration if we succeed in finding out what is this uh, thevenin model of this big circuit so now our objective will be to find out this thevenin equivalent so let us separate out this circuit and then uh, try to find out what is the thevenin model so circuit is this thing so keep in mind now the circuit whose thevenin model we are trying to find out as one independent uh, source here right this independent source uh, vi1 which is going to be ac so in general now the thevenin model will contain a voltage source and a register also rth and vth so this is the node between which we want to find out the other end is ac grounded here so here you can uh, try to find out what will be the thevenin model for this case <coughs> so i will uh, mention the result only directly so if you try to find out rth so for finding out rth what you will have to do you have to remove all the external sources present in the circuit so this is what you are going to do you are going to make uh, vi1 is equal to 0 so when you do this thing this scenario this circuit reduces to the previous circuit that we analyzed and for previous circuit what we found was uh, rth was 1 by gm looking into the source here because in this direction the impedance is going to be increment so since this is mos 1 so rth will become 1 by gm 1 now we have to find out what is vth so vth uh, for that we will have to take the help of a small signal model to find out what will be vth so you can analyze this circuit so to find out the uh, vth and in this case so uh, vth will turn out to be equal to vi1 so now we can substitute uh, m1 along with vi1 
this much position with uh, Thevenin model. And the resultant circuit is going to be like this. So here we can find out uh, V O I one minus, and this is uh, the circuit common gate with of course lambda is equal to zero and non ideal source. So this is non ideal source because it has certain internal resistance is equal to RTH. So for this, uh, one can find out the uh, voltage gain here. Suppose this is the output voltage. So no, uh, not this one. This is the With respect to this voltage, one can find out uh, voltage gain AV CG is equal to VO I1 minus divided by VTH. And this turns out to be of same formula as the common source with no negative sign. We know that uh, common gate and common source, they have same gain formula for simple cases for lambda is equal to zero. So here uh, we have AVS VO I1 minus divided by VTH is equal to RD2 divided by RS. So RS is basically RTH, which is one by GM1. And this GM is for the mass two. So this is one by GM2. And this VTH uh, will turn out to be same as the input, external input. So VO1 minus will be equal to RD2. TH can be taken on that side, right side. So this will become uh, VI1 divided by 1 by GM1 plus 1 by GM2. So this is the second uh, output for the first input. The second input is zero here at the gate of MOS2. So now using this expression and this one, so let us call this as uh, equation four. And this is equation five. So the net output for the first input is VO1 is equal to VO I1 plus minus VO I1 minus. So uh, four and five. We get this. Uh, minus RD1 plus RD2 divided by 1 by GM1 plus 1 by GM2 into VI1. So this is only due to O1. Now we have to find out what will be the output for the second input that means when we have vi2 present but the first 
input is now not there that means it is grounded so in this case uh, there will be different output so v o i 2 v o i 2 minus For the second input, output is going to be VOI2 plus minus VOI2 minus. So we need not uh, go through the complete derivation once again. One can observe this equation 6. So equation 6, if you observe, is indistinguishable. Uh, with respect to the present input because uh, both rd1 rd2 they are in numerator and they are in some form so by looking at rd numerator and similarly by looking at denominator one will never be able to say that which specific input is present in the circuit for which you are trying to find out the output so from here one can uh, guess that the output for the second input will also be of this form only thing is that uh, this sign will possibly get modified so the second output is in fact sign will also be there so second output vo2 is going to be of form rd1 plus rd2 divided by 1 by gm1 plus 1 by gm2 into vi2 okay. So the net output will be simply sum of these two, equation six and equation uh, seven. Actually here we can do slight uh, modification to see that why there is no negative sign there. So this VI one can be written as VI one minus zero and here this can be written as minus there and zero for the first input this input minus vi2 so now the net input so the net output is uh, going to be vo equal to VO1 plus VO2. So, from 6 and 7, VO is equal to minus RD1 plus RD2 divided by 1 by GM1 plus 1 by GM2 into vi1 minus vi2 so the av becomes vo which is equal to vo plus minus vo minus divided by vi1 minus vi2 is equal to minus rd1 plus rd2 into gm1 gm2 gm1 plus gm2 so we get the same formula that we got from the previous uh, analysis the third part we will take up in the next uh, class that means uh, half circuit technique